Hello, darling. It's me, the mistress of all things morbid, Elvira. Now, let's face it. I am no stranger to being under the covers. But occasionally, it's what's on the covers that count. Just like the work of the greatest horror artist who ever drew a breath. Drew, breath, artist, get it? Oh, well. This is one guy whose hands have more talent than my last massage therapist. Step inside the world of Famous Monsters magazine, most infamous cover artist, Basil Gogos. The 1960s and 1970s were wonderful times to be a kid, especially if you were a little monster. The monster craze was at its peak, and magazines like Famous Monsters of Filmland were obsessions for kids who couldn't get enough of their favorite fiends. Fans relished the rare photos, cool ads, and informative articles, all served up with giant gobs of ghoulish humor. But nothing made a bigger first impression on the buyers of Famous Monsters than the magazine's amazing covers. Many talented artists got their start painting cover art for famous monsters, including James Bama, Russ Jones, and Ron Cobb, who went on to work on films like Alien. Even veteran movie artist Albert Nutzel contributed memorable famous monster covers. But in all of monster fandom, the most popular and best-loved covers were those painted by the legendary Basil Gogos. For over 40 years, this prolific artist has dazzled fans with images of their favorite monsters. Dramatically rendered in striking colors, Basil Gogos' paintings are unique. But their appeal is universal. Born in Egypt, Basil Gogos moved to America while still in his teens. He worked menial jobs to put himself through art school. And soon, he was creating cover illustrations for cowboy novels. While Basil was working as a sign painter for $15 a week, two other men were making names for themselves in the magazine industry. In 1957, Publisher James Warren and editor Forrest J. Ackerman launched their creation, Famous Monsters of Filmland. The publishers of Famous Monsters were constantly scouting for fresh blood to add to their talent roster. Enter a young Basil Gogos, who started working for the magazine in 1960. Classic movie monsters would never look the same. My agent, he got a call from Jim Warren, who was the publisher of uh, uh, famous monsters of film line who wanted a portrait done for a cover that was just strange unusual and that's all I had to go by so my agent said look he wants something psychedelic almost can you do it working from New York 3,000 miles from the magazine's base in California Basil created a cover for issue number nine that was a nightmare come true. This stunning portrait of Vincent Price in the House of Usher was rendered in pencil and colored with translucent dyes. Fans loved it. Warren quickly ordered another Gogos cover for the very next issue. For these classic interpretations, the young artist was paid the princely sum of $125 per painting. In the beginning, I was doing these paintings in four hours. All the paintings that you grew up with uh, before King Kong were done very rapidly. Not for any commercial reasons, but because they were so much fun to do. Basil Gogos became Famous Monsters' most prolific cover artist during the early 1960s, a time many fans considered the magazine's golden years. As long as he delivered the goods, the artist was given almost total creative freedom. 
While the artists constantly experimented with new techniques and different mediums, the results were always uniquely basil gogos. I mean, it seems like 99% of the time he's painting images that you've only ever seen black and white. And he's the only guy that can take these things and make them color, and it works. It's like a gift to make, you know, take these black and white images and just bring them to life. I worked out a way of creating colors that were unheard of. I would paint a face, a portrait, which was lit by a yellow light, an orange light, a red light, and a purple light. And behind it, I would throw a sweet blue light. In other words, I worked with five different color lights to create the changes in one face. Fans would write to famous monsters inquiring about the mysterious artist. Like the Phantom of the Opera, the artistry had to be the work of a darkly brilliant and deranged mind. I was a guy who was painting to pay the rent and survive. In an effort to create variety, or maybe just to save a few bucks, the publishers of famous monsters occasionally tried a photographic cover. But fans preferred the Go-Go's touch, and whenever sales began to slump, Basil would be called in to turn up the voltage. When Boris Karloff passed away in 1969, Gogos was asked to create a tribute featuring the greatest monster of them all. Frankenstein would be the painting to do. I must have painted the monster of Frankenstein so many times. I loved his face, but I loved the character as well. Very authentic, they were all authentic, original, so were they all. But for my money, he was the best. Basil Gogo's 23-year association with famous monsters ended when the magazine ceased publication in 1985. Well, Basil Gogos painted, I believe, altogether 40 covers for famous monsters, and they were so ghoulishly realistic that they, they just grabbed readers right off the newsstand. He just seemed like he was born to uh, be a cover artist for famous monsters. During the 1980s, Basil worked as an illustrator and retoucher for movie company United Artists. But the lure of horrorwood was strong, and Basil missed his monsters. By the time the 1990s rolled around, those same horror-loving baby boomers who read famous monsters in the 1960s were ready to reclaim their youth. Their search quickly returned Gogos to the forefront of creepy art. But this time, it wasn't only at the newsstand on magazines like Monster Scene that fans could dig up their favorite artist. They could also find Gogos' work at the music store. And when it was time to make another album, there was like no other choice. And I called him up immediately, and I love how it looks like he paints like it's 1960. Like he doesn't try to wait to jazz it up or change it. They look totally classic, like whether it's a, a famous Monsters cover from however many years ago or the thing he sent me last week, it looks the same. And it's just, it's perfect formula. You can also find the artist at basilgogos.com on the internet. Fans can browse through a virtual art gallery and even buy beautiful reproductions of Gogos monster paintings. Basil Gogos has no intention of slowing down. Horror fans can rest assured that as long as there are creatures of the night, Basil will be painting them. Artist work evolves. It grows with the experience of the years. You just want to do more. I do know the process of painting a picture. I live in color, so all this enriches my art.